Hi friends, welcome back to Matchbox Muse. I'm Morgan and on this cozy corner of the internet, I talk about my cozy hobbies and self-care. So if that sounds like your jam, make sure you tap subscribe so you don't miss out on more cozy videos. In this week's video, I wanna catch up about some things I've made, some things I'm watching, some things I'm reading. So since I wanted to do this video as a knit and chat style, I'm gonna talk about what I've been knitting lately. What I'm currently knitting is my first pair of socks. I have actually already completed the first sock. This is my first sock I've ever finished and I still have to weave in some ends, but it is actually a lace sock with beautiful leaf detailing. This pattern is called the Woodland Walk Sock and it's actually a free pattern on Ravelry. So I will link it down below if you're interested in knitting this up yourself. I did actually knit this sock a little too large, but it does fit on my foot and it does stay on my foot. And for the sock too, they may not match perfectly, but I am trying to correct my course and make it a little smaller so that it fits better and tighter. It's also so that I know what size I need to make my socks with my sock knitting going forward so that I don't run into this issue with future socks. But it's obviously gonna be different with every yarn selection. The yarn I'm knitting with is Lion Brand Superwash Merino in the color Mushroom, which is actually pretty funny because I'm allergic to mushrooms, but I'm obsessed with everything mushroom aesthetic and apparently this colorway called mushroom. I am a big fan of naturals and neutrals. And honestly, I'm pretty proud of myself with how that sock turned out. I have tried making socks in the past. One time it was when I was crocheting because I'm a long time crocheter. I'm actually a pretty new knitter. I want to make a video about my original inspiration for picking up knitting, which was the Folklore Cardigan by Taylor Swift. I was following the crochet pattern for a long time and I'll talk about that more if I ever finish it and get to post that video but I wanted to knit it and so I was like I'm gonna teach myself to knit just like I taught myself to crochet right and I thought it was a lot easier to pick up than I than I anticipated it would be and that's 100% because I'd already learned how to crochet but I do know that many people struggle to to pick up the second art craft if they already do the first. Like say if you're a knitter, it can be hard to pick up crochet sometimes. Because I chose to knit in the, is it continental way where you hold with your non-dominant hand, I think it feels pretty much the same as crochet for me. Um, obviously there is still a learning curve. You have to learn the anatomy of knitting. I could always make a video in the future about um, learning to knit as a crocheter. I don't feel competent enough to speak on how to knit because I am still learning myself. I watch so many tutorials still as I knit. Um, the only reason I'm able to just knit away on this while I chat is because I already have made the first sock and this is obviously me just repeating that process, but I'm on the, I'm just on the leg of the sock right now, which is kind of repeating the same part of the pattern over and over. And once I get to the heel flap, you better believe I'm going to be watching a tutorial. It's, it's still something that's very new to me. And I, like I said, am only, only started to learn knit in the past year, I'd say. I think I picked up knit last November but I am really enjoying the process of knitting. And something else I've been making is working on my fall candles for my candle business, Mind Aroma Co. This is one of my August collection scents, honey. It is scented as spiced honey and bergamot tea. It is such a delicious aroma. Honey is inspired by my love for Matilda the movie. Growing up as a kid, that was always my favorite movie. I connected so deeply with the character Matilda. At the time, I thought it was just her love for books and the library, but growing up and entering my own healing journey and therapy journey, I've come to learn more about why I connected with her so deeply. And suffice it to say, I'm in my Miss Honey era. I am working on being my own Miss Honey now, and I just love Miss Honey's cottagecore vibes as well. And then the second scent in this collection is called August. August is scented as spiced cider and cedar, and it is such a lovely transitional scent between summer and fall. I feel like August really is that, and I know it's completely a summer month technically, 
but the entire month of August just feels like the sunset of a summer and I wanted to capture that in an aroma. Both August and Honey will be available in my jar size candles as well as my wax melts that are made plastic free and my perfume oils. That collection will actually be coming out on July 29th so either follow my Instagram so that you can turn on reminders for it and if you want to be the first to get shop updates make sure you subscribe to my email newsletter and I'll have that link down below as well. And what have I been reading? I actually just finished reading 112263 and I loved it. I won't, I will say it wasn't quite a five star. I thought at certain points that it might be a five star, but it was a 4.5 for me, which is still really good. I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed it for a Stephen King book because he's not someone I ever thought I would read. The fact that it was time travel is what hooked me, right? When I heard Haley Pham say that it was a time travel love story, I was like, are you sure you're talking about Stephen King? But when I tell you that the romance literally had me on the emotional level of the notebook, I mean it. It was really such an entertaining and interesting read. For someone who's not a history buff, to enjoy reading about trying to prevent the assassination of a president in the 60s, I think that that really speaks to how well Stephen King writes because I didn't think that was something that could keep me so entertained but it very much did. They told, I'm counting my stitches. 112263 is about a man who has been shown a rabbit hole to 1958, and the person who shows him wants him to take over his mission of preventing the assassination of JFK. He believes this will alter the future. So it is a very interesting take on time travel, and I enjoyed that a lot. It felt like historical fiction, it touched on philosophy. There's even a part of it that feels dystopian. And Stephen King really surprised me with being able to create such chemistry between two characters in a romantic way. I did not think he could write such a compelling romance, but I mean, he is one of the, I think, most respected authors or writers of our time. And he does paint a really good story. As someone who is a Swifty, I think I've come to like really respect storytelling. And Stephen King really has that. I think that the way he tied in, even the first line of the book being, I've never been a crying man. And then when something happens that hits the main character really hard, whether or not he cries, he repeats that line of, well, I've never been a crying man. And it really helps you know the inner workings of the character and be and feel connected with him from the beginning. And since I'm waiting on the new episodes of Too Hot to Handle, I am itching for something new to watch. And when I finished reading this time travel love story, I asked my friend for more time travel love stories and she told me I needed to watch Outlander. I have wanted to read those books and that's why I think I haven't watched the show. I've been like, oh, I'll, I'll read them. And I did the same thing with The Witcher for the longest time. I didn't want to watch it because I wanted to read it. But like, there's so many books and so little time, especially as a mom. So I just had to break down and finally start watching it. My husband and I did watch The Witcher and I cannot, oh, there's a new season out and we need to sit down and watch it together. I am very sad this is going to be the last season with Henry Cavill, but I have started watching Outlander and I am already obsessed. I love time travel stories. I love a time travel romance. More specifically, I usually love romances that span through like decades or time. So I love a soulmate story. I love reincarnation tropes. I'm only a few episodes in, but I'm pretty hooked. And I would love to hear if you guys have more recommendations for me as far as shows or especially books that handle those tropes of time travel or reincarnation and just love stories. I love a romance that has those elements. So please drop your recommendations down below for those. Another thing that is very exciting in the works is I'm having an office chair delivered today. I bought an office chair during the Prime Day sale because my office chair is actually just a dining table chair and that's not very comfortable. When I'm spending hours working on my small business, my website, um, now my videos, which is so exciting. So I wanted to have a comfortable chair. It felt like an act of self-care to buy myself a nice chair that I can sit in. Plus my husband is going to be 
most likely working remotely after this year, so we're gonna need nice office chairs. And I thought what better time to invest in one than Prime Day. I think when it comes to Prime Day, an important discussion to have was you're not saving money if you are spending money you weren't already going to spend. I tried to keep that in mind with this sale and I bought the thing that we've been wanting for a while, which I think was very responsible of me. <laughs> and that's what I have to tell myself when I'm spending a little chunk of money. And another thing I'm hoping to do is start organizing my yarn stash. My gosh, has it gotten out of hand. I might put in some clips right now of what the status of it looks like, but I just want you guys to know that I need to have a video coming soon of me organizing my yarn stash. Keep me accountable because I need to finally organize it. It's a mess. It is overwhelming. I don't even have like that much yarn compared to a lot of people I watch on here, but it, the bins are overflowing. It's a lot. So hopefully the next video you see from me will be me organizing my yarn stash finally. I am going to be ordering a yarn ball winder to kind of tidy up some of my things that some of my projects that are going to be scrapped and also some of my scrap yarns that have just been thrown in bucket. So stay tuned for that. I've also been working on trying to wean myself off of coffee just a little bit. I'm not trying to stop drinking it altogether, but I was a Starbucks barista for five years and I drank so much coffee and I was the most anxious person. I am the most anxious person, especially during that season of my life where I was consuming copious amounts of espresso. Um, and in my life lately, I have noticed that I drink like two cups of coffee a day and I have been feeling more and more anxious. And I know that it's the season of life I am in. I'm a new mom. I don't know how long you get to say new mom. I've been a mom for 14 months now, but it always is gonna feel new, I think, because I every, every stage is you're experiencing it for the first time. So I guess I'll say first time mom. I'm a first time mom, I'm gonna be anxious, but I've been seeing my therapist and, and some of the things I've been trying to be more aware of is my social media presence and trying to make sure I set boundaries with social media as well as my caffeine intake. It's interesting because I feel like my morning cup of coffee is an act of self-care and it is in its own way. That's why I have a candle called Fill Your Cup because I think those slow morning moments where you have your coffee and you sit and you have a slow morning. I think that is an act of self-care in its own right. But I also think self-care is knowing when to draw boundaries for your own well-being. And I think that knowing that coffee is probably causing issues with my anxiety and even hormones because I have PCOS and maybe I should talk about that more as well. But I think that knowing when to draw boundaries is also an act of self-care. Hi friends, I was just editing this video and I wanted to pop on and correct myself a little bit. I guess it's not really a correction, but I just wanna expand on this discussion on self-care because here I'm talking about trying to cut back on coffee because I was trying to minimize my levels of anxiety and that is a valid form of self-care, but I was talking to one of my friends about whether limiting caffeine helps her anxiety and she lovingly pointed out to me you're having a bad day, you're sad, drink the coffee. And that spoke to me greatly because I think when we're in this headspace of having a bad day, not feeling okay, we wanna solve it. And part of feeling our feelings is observing the emotions without needing to correct them. And that's something I am always working on in this season of life. But honestly, it's just a journey. We're just on a journey. I don't need to fix my anxiety by stopping drinking coffee when I'm having a bad day or if I'm in a rough phase of my son going through teething. So I just wanted to pop on here and say that self-care can be setting boundaries and discipline with yourself, but self-care can also be feeling your feelings and not trying to fix them. And I've also been trying to practice stretching more, just pausing my knit to stretch my hands and my neck because we get so tight when we're sitting in all tensed up. So I'm just trying to practice these other methods of self-care that aren't just doing my hobbies. Things like showering and rest are something that is hard for anyone who struggles with mental health. But especially when you're a mother, you have 
to prioritize your time in a way that you can take care of yourself and you don't get forgotten along with trying to take care of everything else or trying to make time for things like knitting. No matter what season of life you're in, I hope you are prioritizing taking care of yourself. Let me know in the comments down below, how are you taking care of yourself this week? I hope you have enjoyed sitting and chatting with me, whether you were knitting or using it in the background. I hope this inspired you to take care of yourself and find time for your cozy hobbies and self-care. If it did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and I hope you stick around to Matchbox Muse for more cozy content.